You know what's bullshit? Yeah, you wanna know what's bullshit? Midi slapping. I genuinely hate it. I've been talking about it for way too long. I'm playing myself like a broken record. But this topic constantly haunts me over and over again. I can't really fucking escape it. Please help me, I am in insufferable pain. I really need to address it because people have been getting away with this way too easily. I can't let that shit slide. Don't go harassing any other people. That's really fucking dumb. But anyways, let's start, shall we? So to understand what I'm talking about, you know, midi slapping, we need to understand a few things. One, what is a midi? Two, what is a sound font? And three, what is a midi slap? I don't really expect my viewer base to, like, not understand this, but if you're new here or something, or you don't really know a lot of music terms, uh, hi. Welcome. So first off, what is a MIDI, a MIDI file? A MIDI is basically a file extension that contains musical information. Not like actual audio, just the information of it. You can open it in a MIDI player or a DAW, a digital audio workstation, your music software. You can kind of mess around with it, uh, swap some sounds or something, and you can hear what the result is. And one of the ways in swapping sounds in a MIDI is with a sound font. What is a sound font, you may ask? So, in the word, take away the sound part. Just focus on the word font, you'll probably get it. If you still don't understand what the fuck I'm talking about, essentially, it's just a font for your MIDI. Like how you apply fonts to text. I use Apple Kid regular, on the regular. It's just how it is. Examples of sound fonts would be... Mm, for the Undertale nerds, the SGM V2.01 sound font. There's the Toho General MIDI sound font. There are also systems out there that use MIDI with sound fonts. Like, say, your classical Super Nintendo, your Game Boy Advance, your Nintendo 64s, whatever. Even your own computer uses them. You have... Sound fonts for Kirby's Dreamland 3, Clay Fighters, Toy Story, F Zero, Star Fox, etc., etc. They provide you with a unique set of sounds just in one single file. I've even made a very short demo for this just to demonstrate. When you listen to the track, your mind instantly jumps to, oh, this is Mother 3. So he's using the Mother 3 sound font. Which is, you know, correct. But say when I'm making music with the Mega Drive sound chip, and your average Joe just goes like, oh shit, he's using the... He's using the Sega Genesis sound font. I'm gonna slap you fucking silly. That is entirely wrong. You should be ashamed of yourself. Sound chips like the Mega Drives and also the NESs, they are FM synthesizer chips. The difference between a sound font and a sound chip is that sound fonts use sample based Synthesis. Sample based synthesis is essentially recording a sound, trimming it, looping it if necessary, and then putting into the sound font. Boom. What you put in is what you get. You can't really edit it unless if you have filters or you have prior experience with editing a sound font. I mean, yeah, sure, you could change the pitch, you could fuck around with portamentos or something, but no, you really can't change it much. I'm pretty sure there are a few techniques out there that help you with that, but I'm not so sure on that part. You can, however, change whatever your instrument sounds like live with FM synthesis, regardless if you're using the Mega Drive sound chip 
or the NES sound chip, you're able to change how your instrument sounds like live, what's your timbre, or whatever. You can change the sounds on an FM synthesizer with, say, an operator. You can change the sounds on a programmable sound chip, the PSG, with duty cycles. You don't really need to be concerned about that right now. Maybe I'll save that for another day. You know, people usually confuse the word sound font and sound chip. So I'm glad that I brought up this a bit just to, you know, make sure everyone understands. I know there are ones made out there, but if you want to use a Sega Genesis sound font, I wouldn't really suggest it. If you want to make, say, a Mega Drive arrangement, I'd suggest that you go for the real deal. You know, VSTs, FM trackers, that kind of stuff. If you're an FL Studio user, I'd probably aim for Jenny. That's the most accessible option. If, say, you're like a cheap guy like me, I suggest you jump onto FM trackers like, say, Fami tracker or deathly mask or vopn that kind of stuff most of them are free uh deathly mask is apparently paid now but it's still pretty cheap i guess there's the legacy version of deathly mask they still have it on the side if you don't want to waste any money but for mobile yeah you have to pay for that the reason why i'm telling you this is because the ultimate genesis sound font isn't really that reliable it has very uh, crunchy drum samples it isn't really reliable if you want to expand your instrument library. It mostly contains instruments from the Sonic games, which personally I don't think they're really fit to be used as general instruments. Well, most of them anyway. The pick bass and the trumpet are based. But yeah, you're really limiting yourself if you're only using that sound font, which, you know, is kind of a bad thing. I'm not saying limits are bad. This limit, however, is kind of bad because uh, you don't really get to diversify your instrumentation with the sound font. And let me tell you this, it's surprisingly way more diverse than you could think. It doesn't just play sonic instruments. That's what the general audience doesn't really understand about it. So yeah, long story short, Genesis sound font bad. Go get Jenny or an FM tracker. I'm getting kind of off track here. So, third point. What the fuck is a MIDI slap? Essentially, it's just taking a sound font, applying it onto a MIDI file, then posting it, and then calling it a day. I don't really like these. Whenever a Genesis sound font remix comes up on YouTube, it usually means doomsday for me. I mean, sure, I can get behind really good sound font remixes. The problem is with the bad ones. Usually it's pretty easy to spot out whether it's MIDI slapped or not from say downloading a MIDI from ShinkoNet and then opening up your MIDI player and then applying it with whatever sound font they used. Usually these videos have like say around thousands to I'd say 10 to 50k views on YouTube. YouTube for some reason really likes to promote these videos really hard which is fucking terrifying. And Jim might be like, oh, just don't mind the numbers, dude. What matters is that you enjoy yourself, you have fun. How am I not supposed to care about the numbers when it literally doesn't make any sense? It doesn't just concern me. What I find particularly interesting is that these midis usually come from ShinkoNet, uh, ar arranged by Netcavi. I wonder. How would they react to a MIDI slap with their MIDI, per se, and it 
being just a lazy creation and somehow getting thousands upon thousands of views. What would they think about that, honestly? I know that Netcavi allows other people to use their midis as long as they give credit, but I do feel they're giving these people a little bit too much power here. It's rubbing me the wrong way. I understand that sometimes these midis are actually made for transcription purposes, which yeah, I can absolutely understand, but these people aren't really using it for that. These people are just lazily making music, and I feel that laziness shouldn't be rewarded. Yet it's the fucking opposite. How the fuck does this happen? It really hurts the people who actually put the effort into arranging the music that they want to. It also hurts the person who probably arranged the MIDI in the first place. I've been arranging my own music without any sort of MIDIs whatsoever ever since the beginning. And getting to where I am takes a lot of work, a lot of discipline. If you're a MIDI slapper and you're just making music this way, I don't think you deserve to call yourself a musician. Everyone else did all the hard work for you. It basically takes no effort to make one of these. Do you not feel any sort of shame? I'd really prefer if you reconsider your choices, put everything down, and start arranging your own music. The journey of learning any sort of art is hard. Music is hard. If you continue to make music like this, you're never going anywhere. You'll never learn anything. It's pointless. At least I'm not screaming. Otherwise, the mic will fucking explode. You know what? I'll just leave it like this. TLDR. MIDI slapping is basically tracing for music. The people who do it unironically and gain something from it should be ashamed of themselves for doing it. Arrange your own music. God damn it. This is your host, John Tay, and it's about 12 in the morning when I'm recording this. So I'm just gonna fucking head out and see what I'll do.